Hello students, I am Zumi Singh, Assistant Professor at UP Rashtri Tandon Open University, Prayagraj. And today I am going to teach you on topic menu and meal planning. Before starting this topic, I just want to give you a brief about meal. What is meal? Meal, when we hear the term meal, so some pictures comes in our mind and it differs from person to person according to their likes and dislikes. If someone likes the junk foods, the pictures of junk food comes in his mind or her mind. Whereas some people think about the healthy meal. Let us discuss more about meal and meal planning and after that we will discuss about different types of menu. This picture tells us more about the meal. Always consider before planning a meal. Suppose we take one example of a housewife uh, where she has uh, many of her duties to perform. So she has to consider the likes and dislikes of whole family. Suppose one children likes some rice and dal, one likes potato and the men hates potato. So this picture tells about one son likes the rice, one son likes the potato but the man hates potato. So she get confused. What to do next? So the answer is to plan a meal with all the likes and dislikes of whole family. Meal should be planned in such a way that contains food of colorful and attractive. It should be palatable. It should be appetizing and economic. Economic consider about the socioeconomic status of the family. Like if we are planning a meal for a lower income group family, so we have to keep in mind the price of the food items available. We can't plan of high expensive food items for a lower income group. Similarly, with high income group, we are free to plan all the food items. So always consider the economy of food. Then there are some essentials of meal planning. So we have to achieve a nutritionally balanced and nutritionally adequate meal. So for this, we have to look about the food availability, food habits, food preferences and purchasing powers. So we discuss one by one. First, discuss about the food availability. If while planning a food or a meal, we have to consider about the availability. Like in summer season, we can't plan a meal of food items containing of winter seasons. Similarly with the rainy seasons and so we have to keep in mind the seasonal availability and availability of food items. Then the food habits. In our family, the different people have different habits. Like some are vegetarian, some are non-vegetarian, some are eggitarians. So while planning a meal, we have to keep in mind and we plan a meal for all the food habits persons. Then food preferences. Some people like spicy foods, some prefer oily food while some avoid oily foods. So always prefer the food preferences while planning a meal. Then purchasing power. While planning a meal, as I already told, we have to keep in mind the socio-economic status of the family. The purchasing power, if the foods are high in income and we are planning for higher income group. So that the meal is completely balanced. But otherwise, we have to keep in mind the economic status and other essential factors too. So while planning a meal, it should be nutritionally balanced and adequate with containing all food items all from different food groups. Like we generally divide all the food groups in three major categories. First is energy giving food, second is bodybuilding and third is protective. Let's talk about energy giving food. Energy giving foods are the foods that provides us instant energy. These foods contain rice, pulse, legumes, different cereals, bread, sugar, nuts and oil seeds that provides us energy whenever required. The second one is bodybuilding foods. It contains mostly the protein rich food items like milk, chicken, egg, cheese, curd and pulses. It provides the proper maintenance of the body. It helps in wear and tear and provides energy too. The third is the protective food items. It helps in repairing of our cells and protects from degenerative diseases. 
the protective foods generally contain all fruits and vegetable except the starchy vegetables now we come for the objectives of meal planning so what are the objectives of meal planning why meal planning is essential what points we have to keep in mind while planning a meal so first it should meet the nutritional requirement of all the individual based on age and activities like if we plan a meal of two different kids one of class 4 to 5 and one is of class 11th the age group are different so we have to keep in mind the nutritional requirement of all age groups the nutritional requirement of the elder one is different and nutritional requirement of younger one is different the second one is activities two same persons of different occupation have different activity levels so their nutritional values are also different like one is housewife and one is office going or a teacher so the nutritional requirement for both the ladies are different so always keep this in mind while planning a meal their age and their activity levels secondly minimizing or spending according to the estimated food budget and always choose food item from different food groups so we have to keep in mind all five basic food groups like cereals pulses fruits and vegetables oils and oil seeds and the sugar and milk and milk products so we have to choose food items from different food groups to make a balanced diet and it should be economically balanced according to their socio economic status then the size and composition of the family is also important like if we are having a big joint family so we have to keep in mind the number of persons living in the family and the food required per person also the composition like if there is old age uh, person is also there younger age is also there so we have to keep in mind the likes and dislikes like the old age one mostly prefer the semi solid foods or the solid and they avoid the solid food while the younger one they prefer more of solid and attractive and colorful foods so we have to keep in mind the composition of the family then always consider the food based on the members preference like the spicy foods the less spicy foods and oily foods also the preparing method like we have to use some methods that the nutrient loss is minimized so if we take examples of cutting of vegetables if we cut vegetables in very small tiny parts so more surface area is increased more nutrients get lost so we have to cut the vegetables in bigger size to decrease the surface area and to minimize the loss of nutrients similarly the way of cooking like if we are plan cooking a food in a open vessels or in a open pan so through evaporation the water soluble vitamins are lost so we have to all kept in mind that while cooking we have to place a lid over the cooking pan or a cooker also the washing of food items like vegetables and fruits always wash the food before peeling avoid washing food items after peeling like after peeling of vegetables if we wash the water soluble vitamins like b vitamins and c vitamins are generally lost so always keep these important points in mind while planning a meal and also reduce time and energy expenditure like if we know in advance about the meal that we have to plan for tomorrow so or do some pre preparations for planning a meal like some pre preparations of soaking fermentation some of the mixing and grinding things so that the time and energy expenditure is reduced then the five food groups that we have to consider while planning a meal these are grains and grain products pulses and legumes milk and milk products fruits and vegetable fats and sugar different food will give you different nutrient value so we have to keep on changing from the we have to take all food from groups and we consider all food groups while planning a meal and we have to keep on changing within the food groups as well like one day we will take one item of cereals other day we have to uh, take from the other cereals keep on changing the will gives you the variety and also it increase the nutrient density of your overall meal these five food groups will increase or helps in fulfilling the daily recommended allowances of a person like 
when we talk about the rda the one person's one day meal is based on their daily recommended allowances so the meal pattern of one person is containing three major meals and two minor meals major meals is your breakfast lunch and dinner while minor meals are in between breakfast and lunch one mid morning snacks and in between lunch and dinner one evening snacks so plan a meal in such a way that it fulfill all the meal requirements all the major and minor meal requirement and it will provide you nutrient density and it should be balanced according to our daily recommended allowances then these are some factors that affect our meal planning first we have to keep in mind the nutritional adequacy it should be fulfill the daily nutrient requirement of individual while containing all proteins calories fat carbohydrates and other minerals and vitamins so we have to keep on changing variety within food groups and between food groups too then availability availability defines according the availability of food according to season like winter season have different availability of fruits and vegetables and summer season have different then economy of meal planning is also important it refers to the socio economic status of family members and acceptability whether the meal plan is accepted by all the family members or not like if we consider about the case of different age group in one family in one joint family so we have to consider about the acceptability of meal then satiety value how the person feels after having a meal it should be satiate that person like the feeling of fullness after having a meal so satiety value should be fulfill after having a meal then variety in meal consider and add more and more of different colors in your meal that it will gives you the variety and it will increase the attractiveness of the meal so the person while seeing the meal it comes in mind that have this meal instead of avoid that meal so avoid the monotonous boring meal and add more and more variety in your meal by considering all food groups and variety within food groups then the meal pattern some families prefer only two or three meal pattern in a day while other prefer four and five so consider always the meal pattern the family is following and economy on the time and labor and fuel always do some pre preparation for meal like if you know the meal in advance then we can save some energy and expenditure time as well then variety helps to ensure appealing and satisfying meal variety in meal give you colors texture flavor like if you prepare a meal adding more and more fruits and vegetables in the form of some sabji in the form of some other form of uh, khichdi or other preparations so color will increase the variety as well as the nutrient density texture is also important like some prefer the semi solid food some prefer the solid food while flavor of the food we can add some natural flavors in the form of vinegar in the form of garlic and ginger to enhance the taste of a meal and it will also add the variety use of different cooking methods like you can use roasting you can use fermentation germination all these will enhance the nutrients availability like before roasting before soaking the nutrients are less available while after these processing methods the nutrients are more available so always use different cooking methods to enhance the nutrient quality of your meal then vary the type of food selected for meals like we can prepare one milk food items like custard another day we can use ghee so different meals with different variety will enhance the taste liking of the person and also it will increase the nutrient density then serve food well garnished that it must be appetizing and appealing this pictures will well explain about the likes and dislikes of a person like one son like don't like the milk but mother always keep on giving him milk but he always dislikes and avoid drinking milk then the mother have an idea and give kheer to her son the son enjoy the kheer very well and he start adding always adding one 
milk food item in their diet always keep in mind the likes and dislikes these are very important and through keeping in mind the right likes of a person we can incorporate all the food groups in the diet otherwise in other form they are avoided then we food cost and economy the economic economizing of your meal plan and with following consideration are very important always compare the price before buying any food items like some food items are cheaper and easily available in some marts and some super bazaars while compared to the other markets so always before purchasing look for some cheaper prices instead of taking some expensive so for this explore some shops or some super bazaars to buy a food at fair prices very important always remember which food item you have to purchase in bulk like non perishable items like pulses cereals some of your oils and nuts these are non perishable food items that you can purchase in a bulk to avoid food wastage whereas fruits and vegetables we can't afford to take fruits and vegetables for one month because they are perishable food items so always keep in mind about the perishable and non perishable food items to avoid food wastage use of seasonal foods as they are economically and nutritious too like in winter seasons prefer more of winter fruit items in summer season prefer more of summer food items because they are economically cheaper and they contain all the nutrients according to the present season always minimize the wastage the right cooking method by adopting all your cooking methods pre preparation you can avoid the wastage of food and always keep in mind the amount of food prepared according to the number of family members minimize the nutrient loss during pre preparation and cooking preparations as we already discussed about the nutrient loss always keep in mind peeling and washing before peeling cut down the fruits and vegetables in bigger size to avoid uh, nutrient loss and decrease the surface area and always cook your food in a closed vessel make a proper use of leftover and the commonly discarded foods like leaves of green leafy vegetables one very good example i want to give here like we always use cauliflower we discard the green leaves of the cauliflower and use the cauliflower for uh, preparing our sabji and all but do you know the green leaves of cauliflower is a richest source of iron so try to incorporate these leaves in different form you can prepare some bhujia you can add in some other salads but try to avoid or discard these essential foods always maintain kitchen garden poultry farm if the facility is available because if you grow and take more of the vegetables from your kitchen garden then it's nutritious and all the food items are easily available at your place then we come to one serving portion of foods so what is one serving when we plan a meal we talked about the meal planning nutrient density nutrient adequacy and the recommended dietary allowances for one day but all the meal all one day nutrient dietary requirements is considered on one portion of food we are taking cereals we are taking proteins we are taking fruits and vegetables but we have to mention the one serving for a particular person like one serving of cereals of 20 grams so we can take at least 8 to 10 uh, servings of cereal depending upon the Uh, RDA of that person, the uh, dietary recommended allowances of that person, their activity levels, and their age group. So one serving depends upon the age, gender, and activity of that person to meet the daily nutrient requirement. And it always one serving portion for a particular person. The following needs to be considered, like the age, gender, activity that we have discussed. food item used like cereal preparations pulses and milk if we are including more of pulses if the person is vegetarian so we have to add more pulses and milks and curd for protein requirement to fulfill their protein rda instead of non veg food items so and on the other way uh, when the person is non vegetarian then we have to add some eggs some chicken some fish to fulfill their protein requirement then the types of preparation the amount used in different preparation 
if we are roasting the amount is different if we are boiling the amount is different so what are the uh, type of preparation we are using always consider the one serving according to the preparations then the food item used alone or in combination like if we are using the combination of meals we are using khichdi we are giving dal so no need to give additional dal we have to maintain one portion of pulse either in the form of dal or in the form of khichdi so repetition of food items is not required consider the combination of food items and the composition of food used like are we using raw or a moisture or a cooked one the serving size of raw one is different the serving size of cooked meal is different so always consider the composition of food and the number of dish prepared in a meal like if a meal con contains more than 4 5 dishes then the nutrient composition the one serving is different if the meal combinations or the numbers are less like 2 or 3 then the nutrient composition and the number of difference one serving is this picture gives you a perfect example of edible portion some foods and items have 100% of the edible portion while others have 80 to 90% of 50% like leafy vegetables edible edible portion may be from 30 to 40% as seen in the picture if we can taking one green capsicum so this 82% is the edible portion and this the waste item that we are uh, discarding is 18% while some food we will take all the total 100% like milk milk products cereals and pulses the whole food is edible so we are taking 100% of that portion then the knowledge of edible and inedible portions of food stuff is very important to decide the quantity of portion consumed what part we have to eat and what part we have to discard the edible portion of the food item is very important before planning a meal these are the list of food items according to food groups based on edible portion of commonly consumed food like cereal and cereal products 100% edible portion pulses milk 100% then meat fish vegetables 90% and other different fruits and vegetables are more than 90 some are 70 to 90 and some are less than 50 in case of nuts and oil seeds this table is showing you one serving portion of various food stuffs like cereals if we consider wheat flour then chapati paratha puri prepared from wheat flour if we are considering the household measures of 4 to 5 then the raw portion of that edible food item is 80 to 120 per grams while considering the rice the boiled rice or pulao one full plate is 80 to 120 grams the dalia corn flakes porridge one bowl is 20 grams the two bread size is of 60 grams then in terms of pulses the dal preparation of one katori the raw food item is 30 grams these all are the raw portions of edible portion of food then milk and milk products milk as such one glass is 250 ml why 250 ml because milk 100% is edible in case of cereals 100% is edible in case of pulses 100% is edible while in case of fruits and vegetable 35 to 40 90 to 60 the variation is there then one serving of various food stuffs like one katori vegetables 100 to 150 grams fruits one katori is 100 to 120 grams 125 grams meat and fishes one is one egg of 40 to 50 grams and fish chicken it's different according to the according to the portion size we are using like one katori is 80 to 100 gram one bowl is 80 to 100 gram and so on then we come to menu what is menu menu very important while planning a meal because menu is a combination of meals like breakfast lunch dinner what all meals we have planned it comes under one menu so menu informs guests about available dishes and the price charged for the whole menu of a particular dish like when we when the menu is decide for restaurant and hotels so keep uh, this some points always consider before 
planning a menu like the staff required the material used the equipment used the likes and dislikes of the customers the rating of the hotels and the restaurant and the economy the beverage procurement of the foods and beverages so menu will decide the whole management of all hotels and restaurant so we will going to learn more about different types of menus the classification of menu is based on pricing schedule meal timing and specialty like the menu for lunch is different the dinner is different and the breakfast is different then the speciality the speciality the south indian food contain different food items the north indian one is different so the speciality is based on the cuisine pricing of the menu some high prices the menus are different some low and cheap price the menus are different and the schedule schedule it's for businessman it's for meetings it's for normal gathering or it's for any kitty parties and so the menu is different according to the different ways then the type of menu first is a la carte a la carte menu that we generally use in hotels and restaurant this a la carte provides a choice of dishes within each specific courses like each dish or dishes are priced separately we can choose any dish from one like suppose we have desserts so we can choose any dish of desserts we have many choice and the price are different the dishes are prepared and cooked as per the order as as the order is placed the dishes are prepared and served to the guest and the bill is prepared according to the dish price and a certain waiting time is also allowed while preparing and serving of dishes it depends on the type of meal if the meal is lighter the preparation time or serving time is less otherwise it depends on the type of dishes the example of a la carte are it uh, divided in different heads like starters it contain different food items like soups seafoods meats and poultry vegetables are different place desserts are differently placed so all the food items are placed separately according to the menu then table de hote table de hote is the table of the host it normally offers a set price or a set number of dishes there is less choice between the dishes and that meal time is serving time is fixed how much time the meal required for preparation and serving this is already fixed and the same the price is also fixed for the table de hote menu the menu limits choice within each course we have only four or five choices there is less choices compared to a la carte menu the examples of these are appetizers or soup meat dishes or vegetable dishes we have to choose any one of these and desserts we have tea or coffee then carte du jour carte du jour is the menu of the day the mostly used operations uh whether it will consider a la carte or the table de hote we can use any of these but it should be the menu of the day these menu are generally uh generally planned to check the availability seasonal availability liking and disliking of the customers and the cuisine the testing the market futures if we are introducing one new dish so how the customers will react whether they accept this meal whether they like the meal or what kind of future of that menu so this will decide it on the basis of menu of the day then cyclic menu cyclic menu it divided according to daily weekly or monthly mostly the hostels the hospitals are following this cyclic menu there the menus are fixed and the main same menu is keep on rotating on weekly basis or monthly basis or 15 days or within 15 days the cyclic menu are designed for a specific period the average cycle with most institution is a week or a month or a whole menu is repeated back like in many hostels the one week menu is fixed the same food item is served whole week and then when the next new week is start the whole menu is keep on repeating these menus a careful attention to nutritional balance and season of the year should be observed in these types of menu like if the season change the menu is will also change according to the season then the combination of menus this combination of menu it will include both whether table de hote or a la carte or the combination of both 
This offers a combination of rice and bread, vegetables or potatoes, entire dish price. Table decorative menus on the other hand may offer an option of the whole meal or a choice of an individually priced and appetizers or desserts of the menu. So combination menu generally contains the combination of menus. These can be table decote, these can be a la carte, these can be table de jour or all in one. Then we come to fixed menu. Some menus are fixed. They keep on repeating all day like the menus of jail, the, uh, the menus given to the prisoner. The menus are fixed and it keep on repeating all the days. The establishment like transient hotels, specialty restaurants or the weekend restaurants may choose fixed menus because the guest in front of a short visit or a visit of a restaurant and a variety of the usual like the guests are fixed they keep on coming on one day of the month and their likings are fixed so the menu is fixed for all the guests for the whole year the restaurant that use such menus either have a large variety of items within each courses when the frequencies keep on repeating when the guest is less so they always consider more and more variety and they keep on repeating but it depends upon the arrangement or the availability of guest. That's all for today's lecture. Thank you.